Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about allergic rhinitis, also known as hay fever. So, allergic rhinitis is nothing but an IgE mediated immunological response of the nasal mucosa to airborne allergens and is characterized by watery discharge, nasal obstruction, sneezing, and itching in the nose. So clinically, it can be divided into two types, that is seasonal and perennial. In seasonal, the symptoms appear in or around a particular season when the pollens of a particular plant to which the patient is sensitive are present in the air. Whereas in perennial, the symptoms are present throughout the year. Now let's see the causes of allergic rhinitis. First of all, we have inhalant allergens. They may be seasonal or perennial. In seasonal allergens, they include pollens from trees, grasses and weeds and they vary geographically. The knowledge of pollen appearing in a particular area and the season in which they occur is very important. Their knowledge also helps in the skin test. Whereas in perennial allergens, they are present throughout the year regardless of the season. They include moles, dust mites, cockroaches and dander from animals. Dust mites live on skin scales and other debris and are found in the beddings, mattresses, pillows and even on carpets. The other cause is through genetic predisposition. It plays an important part and the chances of children developing allergy are 20 and 47 percentage respectively if one or both parents suffer from allergic diathesis. Now let's learn about the pathogenesis of allergic rhinitis. So first of all, the inhaled allergens produce specific IgE antibody in the genetically predisposed individuals. And this antibody becomes fixed to the blood basophils or tissue mast cells by its FC end. And on subsequent exposure, the antigen combines with IgE antibody at its FAB end. And this results in the degranulation of the mast cells with release of several chemical mediators. And because of this, the allergic disease takes place. And how these chemical mediators act is by either creating a vasodilation, mucosal edema, infiltration with eosinophils, excessive secretion from nasal glands or smooth muscle contraction. So clinically, the allergic response occurs in two phases. First, we have the acute or early phase. It occurs immediately within 5 to 30 minutes after exposure to the specific allergen and consists of sneezing, rhinorrhea, nasal blockage and or bronchospasm. It is due to the release of the vasoactive amines like histamines. Next we have the late or delayed phase. It occurs 2 to 8 hours after exposure to allergen without additional exposure. It is due to infiltration of inflammatory cells such as eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, monocytes and CD4 plus T cells at the site of antigen deposition causing swelling, congestion and also thick secretions. In the event of repeated or continuous exposure to allergen, acute phase symptomatology overlaps the late phase. Now let's see the clinical features. 
First of all, let's see the nasal signs. The nasal signs include transverse nasal crease, which you can appreciate in this picture right here, which is nothing but a black line across the middle of the dorsum of nose due to constant upward rubbing of nose simulating a salute or allergic salute like impression. It is pale and edematous nasal mucosa which may appear bluish in color. And also the other nasal signs include the turbinates will be swollen in nature. And also you can appreciate thin, watery or mucoid discharge is usually present. Now let's move on to the ocular signs. The ocular signs include edema of the lids, congestion and cobblestone appearance of the conjunctiva of the eye and also dark circles under the eyes like this which is called as allergic shyness. Then the otolith signs. These include retracted tympanic membrane or serous otitis media as a result of eustachian tube blockage. The pharyngeal signs include granular pharyngitis due to hyperplasia of submucosal lymphoid tissue. A child with perennial allergic rhinitis may show all the features of prolonged mouth breathing as seen in adenoid hyperplasia. Laryngeal signs include hoarseness and edema of the vocal cords. Now let's see the investigations for allergic rhinitis. First of all, we have total and differential counts. The peripheral isnophilia may be seen, but this is an inconsistent finding. After that, we will be relying on nasal smears. The nasal smear will show large number of isnophils in case of allergic rhinitis. The nasal smear should be taken at the time of clinically active disease or after nasal challenge test. The nasal isnophilia is also seen in certain non-allergic rhinitis, example NAIRS, which is non-allergic rhinitis with isnophilia syndrome. Next we have skin test. These tests help to identify the specific allergen. We have prick test, scratch test and intradermal test. The skin prick test. This is an excellent method to demonstrate the allergen. A drop of concentrated allergen solution is placed on the volar surface of the forearm or back and a sharp needle pricked into the dermis through the drop. It introduces the allergen into the dermis. A positive reaction is manifested by the formation of central wheel and a surrounding zone of erythema or flare within 10 to 15 minutes. Simultaneously, a control test is performed with histamine and the diluent used in allergen solution. Next is specific IgE measurements. It is an in vitro test to find specific allergen. There is a good correlation between the skin test and the specific IgE measurements. However, both false positive and false negative results can occur. It is therefore recommended to correlate the two tests with clinical symptoms also. Next is Radio Allergy Sorbent Test, also known as RAST. It is an in vitro test and measures specific IgE antibody concentration in the patient's serum. Then we have Nasal Provocation Test. It is a crude method and is to challenge the nasal mucosa with a small amount of allergen placed at the end of a toothpick and asking the patient to sniff into each nostril and to observe if allergic symptoms are produced. So what could be the complications for allergic rhinitis? There could be recurrent sinusitis because of the obstruction of the sinus ostia. 
formation of nasal polyp in about 2% of cases. Also there could be serous otitis media. Another complications include orthodontic problems and other ill effects of prolonged mouth breathing especially seen in children. Also bronchial asthma could be another complications because patients of nasal allergy have four times more risk of developing bronchial asthma. 20 to 30 percent of patients with rhinitis have asthma. So what could be the treatment for allergic rhinitis? The best treatment is to avoid the allergen. It is the most successful if the antigen involved is single. Then we have another treatment support like treatment with drugs. So what could be the drugs? First of all, we have antihistaminics. They control rhinorrhea, sneezing and also nasal itchings. All antihistaminics have the side effect of drowsiness, some more than the other. The dose and type of antihistaminic has to be individualized. If one antihistaminic is not effective, another may be tried from a different class. Then we have sympathomimetic drugs. It may be oral or topical. Alpha adrenergic drugs constricts the blood vessels and reduce nasal congestion and edema. They also cause central venous system stimulation and are often given in combination with antihistaminics to counteract drowsiness. Pseudoephedrine and phenylephrine are often combined with antihistaminics for oral administrations. Next we have corticosteroids. Oral corticosteroids are very effective in controlling the symptoms of allergic rhinitis but their use should be limited to acute episodes which have not been controlled by other measures. They have several systemic side effects. Next we have sodium chromoglycate. It stabilizes the mast cells and prevents them from degranulation despite the formation of IgE antigen complex. It is used as 2% solution for nasal drops or spray or as aerosol powder. It is useful both in seasonal as well as perennial allergic rhinitis. Another choice of drug is anticholinergics. They block the rhinorrhea both of the allergic and non-allergic rhinitis. Ipratropium bronide has been used as nasal spray to control rhinorrhea. There are no systemic side effects. Next is leukotriene receptor antagonist. They include Montelukast, Prandlukast and Zafirlukast. They block cystinyl leukotriene type receptors. They are well tolerated and have only few side effects. Next is anti-IgE. It reduces the IgE level and has an anti-inflammatory effect also. Omalizumab is such a drug. It is indicated in children above 12 years who have moderate to severe asthma. It is not approved for allergic rhinitis. Next we have immunotherapy. Immunotherapy or hyposensitization is used when drug treatment fails to control symptoms or produce intolerable side effects. Allergen is given in gradually increasing doses till the maintenance dose is reached. Immunotherapy suppresses the formation of IgE. It also raises the titer of specific IgG antibody. Immunotherapy has to be given for a year or so before significant improvement of symptoms can be noticed. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thank you for listening.